Hello everyone and welcome to the 100 Wonders of the World. Today we'll be talking about the Valley of the Kings, that's in Egypt, continent in Africa. Valley of the Kings. Thebes was the capital of ancient Egypt, the center of the Pharaonic Kingdom, for over 400 years and location of Egypt's most important cults, the nearby Valley of the Kings is the world's greatest necropolis. The new kingdom from 1537 to 1070 BCE, the periods of the 18th through the 20th dynasties was the golden age of the Thebes, the city we now know, uh, know as Luxor. The Paros freely spent their unimaginable, um, in, unimaginable wealth and treasures to beautify their royal city on both banks of the Nile with magnificent temples and palaces. The finds uncovered here by archaeologists over the course of centuries are the stuff legend. History and legend swirl around the long dead kings, weaving together fact and fiction so that one can no longer be disentangled from the other. Thebes of the Hundred Gates, as the later Greek historian Herodotus described it, grew into an expensive and powerful city during the New Kingdom. Its world-famous fantastic buildings and, and um, its world's famous fantastic buildings and monuments have survived for millennia bearing witness even today to the glory and wealth of this gigantic city of the Peros filled with palaces and temples. Among the monuments that still survive are the Temple of Luxor, the enormous temple city of Karnak, with its Amon Temple, the funerary temple of Hatshepsut, and last but not least the famous grave complexes in the Valley of the Kings. The rise and expansion of Thebes into the political center and greatest necropolis in Egypt is inextricably intertwined with the most important Kara who ever reigned in the land of the Nile. Ramses II, uh, 20, uh, 1298 to 1213 BCE, during his 60 year reign. 1279 through 1213 BCE, Ramses II guided the destiny of his country like no other ruler before him or since. In this period, Egypt's economy and culture reached heights that can scarcely be believed, an epic that would never be reigned again. Ramses' skill in diplomacy gave Egypt nearly 50 years of peace with its neighbors, which freed both the people of Egypt and their extraordinary ruler to pursue other things. Ramses devoted his considerable energy to the beautification of his capital city and the construction of his tomb. Together with his advisors, he put together the plans for a palace grave, the Ramsesum. However, before he himself could be laid to rest, this exceptionally long-lived Pharaoh buried a great May, uh, many family members nearby in Thebes, turning it into uh, into Egypt's <clears throat> into Egypt's largest necropolis. With Amon Temple of Karnak, Ramses II completed the work that his father Seti had begun, but in a much more elaborate style than Seti himself had ever dreamed possible. This is the greatest of all Egyptian temples with 134 columns, each 60 feet high supporting the Great Hall, he never stopped commissioning monuments that would stand as proof of his unlimited power. The Temple of Luxor, which he enlarged with the addition of a courtyard larger than all the others, served his purpose well. Statuses taught by portrait heads of the pharaohs decorated the enormous open space. Ramses also visited the funerary temple of Hatshepsut. This queen had ruled Egypt some 200 years earlier. The woman ruler was from Ramses II's point of view, unthinkable. He had all the temple's encryptions to Hatshepsut removed, replacing her name with his own. Sometimes around 1253 BC, Ramses II's favorite wife, Nefertiti, died. 
to honor her, Ramses commissioned the most elaborate grave monument in the Valley of the Queens, located directly to the south of the Valley of the Kings, where the remains of many Pharaoh's wives rest in over 90 graves. Nefertari's monument is designed to be worthy of Paro, the female Paro who stood at the side of the greatest Paro of all. Ramses II himself died in 1213 BCE. He left behind more than 100 children, a wealthy and prosperous land, a capital city whose buildings have lost or none of their beauty, continuing to draw admirers up to the present day. The legacy of the most magnificent Paro continues to impress and fascinate the Valley of the Kings, the legendary Valley of the Dead rulers on the western bank of the Nile, is the largest and best known necropolis in all of Egypt. More than 60 tombs have been identified there, so far most belonging to kingdom, uh, to the new kingdom Paros. The first funerary temple in the Valley of the Kings was built during the 18th dynasty. The Egypt, uh, to the Egyptians, the monument graves of the rulers were designed to be their million year homes. Amazing. Among the most widely known graves site in the valley are, tom are tomb number 7, belonging to Ramses II, number 42, the funerary temple of the Hatshepsut, and number 62, the famous grave of the Pharaoh. Tutankhamun that was first discovered in 1922. The most recent grave in the Valley of the Kings belongs to Pero Ramses XI of the 20th dynasty, who died around 1070 BCE, still following the traditions of his forefathers by building his tomb at this site. For many years, grave robbing was a profitable and ever-expanding branch of the local economy. Entire bands of thieves plundered and smashed their way through the graves of their deceased rulers, selling the valuable graves goods under the table to black market traders. For many centuries, the Valley of the Kings lay slumbering in obscurity known only to the local inhabitants. Then in 1768, the French missionary priest Cloudy Seacart stumbled upon the Valley of the Kings more or less by chance setting off a wave of archaeological expeditions. These sensational discoveries inspire scientists from every European capital to, unco to uncover the secrets of the Valley of the Kings. Napoleon's expedition to Egypt marked the first systematic study in the valley, and also the first systematic looting to reach the Egyptian treasures that are now housed in the Louvre Museum in Paris, Beard Witness. The most renowned grave site discovered so far is, without a doubt, the tomb of the Para Tutankhamun. An important para during his lifetime, the contents of his monumental burial amazed and astounded the entire world. His splendid tomb, packed with lavish grave edges such as the Pharaoh's solid gold death mask, survives as a unique example of the magnificence of the Kingdom of Egypt. British archaeologist Howard Carter broke into the nearly intact tomb in November 4, 1922, entered the burial chamber itself on February 17, 1923, and, op and opening the elaborately decorated sarcophagus, uh, sarcophagus and at, at a later uh, a day later, the valuable grave gifts and lavish furnishings from the tomb can be viewed today in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Ever since the tomb was opened, rumors have circulated about the connection between the more or less mysterious death of a great number of those who took part in the excavation of the English Egy Egy uh, Egyptologist Howard Carter and his um, financer, Lord Carnarvon, including speculation about the so-called curse of the Paros. Is there such a thing as a curse placed by the dead rulers on anyone who violates the tombs? The tombs. The poisonous gases waft out of the tomb after it was opened because of the deaths. Will the mummy's curse ever end? It said that an inscription was found over the entrance to Tutankhamun's grave chamber and that it read, Dead shall come on sweet wings to him, to him who disturbs and the, and the peace of the king indeed 
although similar warnings are not uncommon at other grave sites in the Valley of the Kings. They serve first and foremost as a means of scaring off potential grave robbers and are not to be understood as litter curses. Despite the somewhat high bloody count among expedition members in the years of following the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, there is a clear reasonable explanation for nearly every death. For example, most of the 30 or so who died were already between 70 and 80 years old, including the expedition's patron, Lord Carnarvon, who died of blood poisoning following either a mosquito bite or a cut inflicted while shaving. Today, the deadly curse has been firmly dismissed by science. The purported Tutankhamun inscription existed only in the fantasies of overly excited British journalists. It is found nowhere among the many hieroglyphic texts in tomb. However, in 1973, a rational scientific explanation for the deaths among members of the expedition was proposed. The grave of the Paras was shown to have harbored an unusually high concentration of the spores of the fungus Asparagus flavus. The metabolic processes of the fungus produce highly poisonous gases that are dangerous for humans. People with a weakened immune system can have an allergic reaction to Asparagus flavus that may lead to organ failure and death. The fungus could help in cause um, deadly illness among exhibition. Now let's look at some of the mo uh, most important dates of the Valley of the Kings, uh, 1506 to 1494 BCE. Parao Tom uh, Tutmosis I had his tomb built here, defined the site as a necropolis for succeeding new kingdom rulers. 1708 CE, Pierre Cloudy Seeker visited the valley, describing it as the burial place of the Paros. 1739, 1768, and 1792, Richard, Pocock, James Bruce, and William George located and identified 20 graves. 1875, the brothers Abd el Rasul uncovered a tomb in Deir el Bahri with 40 royal mummies. March 9, 1898, Victor Lorette opened the tomb of Amenopolis III where he found another catch of royal mummies. November 4, 19, 19, uh, 1922, Howard Carter entered the still most inact tomb of Paros Tutankhamun. In 1995, American archaeologist Kent Weeks discovered a tomb with more than 120 burial chambers. Spring of 2016, discovery of burial chamber with seven wooden sarcophagi. Now let's look at some of the most important, uh, important facts. The Valley of the Kings is a necropolis where as of March 2016, uh, 2006, the tombs of 63 Egyptian pharaohs have been located. It was rediscovered in 1708 by the French priest Claudi Sicard. The Valley of the Queens has over 90 graves containing the remains of the pharaoh's wives and other family members. The most important tomb does belong to Nefereti. The Ramsism is the mortuary temple of Ramses II. Its official name is Palace of Ramses II, united with Thebes in the Kingdom of Ammon. The Temple of Karnak is the largest temple complex in all of Egypt. It includes the largest sacred building in the world, the Temple of Ammon. The Temple of Luxor was known as the Southern Sacred Enclosure of Ammon. It was dedicated to the god Ammon, his wife Mut, and their son, the moon god Chans. Thank you for listening everyone. Stay tuned for more 100 Wonders of the World.